Welcome to our lesson on inferences from two sample means when we have dependent samples, which are sometimes referred to as matched pairs. Now we saw in a previous lesson how to uh, deal with doing hypothesis testing and confidence intervals for two sample means when those two samples were independent. Now we're going to see the difference in how to compute those two things when the two samples are dependent. Because our hypothesis test and our confidence intervals um, use the same standard uh, distribution and standard error, they're equivalent in the sense that they result in the same uh, conclusions when we're dealing with dependent samples. So consequently, the null hypothesis that the mean differences are zero, right? there's no difference between uh, the two, can be tested by determining whether or not the confidence interval actually includes zero. We've seen before uh, the use of a hypothesis test, uh, sorry, uh, the use of a confidence interval to help determine um, hypothesis testing. And in the past, it hasn't been a very robust or reliable um, way of doing it. In this particular instance, it does actually work a little bit better, although just for consistency's sake, it's probably best to just not do it and just rely on always doing a normal hypothesis test if you're trying to figure out whether or not uh, differences are equal to zero or not. Um, there are no exact procedures for dealing with dependent samples, um, but the t distribution is a really good approximation. So the following methods are what are commonly used um, when we're dealing with uh, dependent samples. Just as a reminder, uh, what is a dependent sample? Um, before we talk about this example, uh, let's remind ourselves that dependent samples are just samples in which the two groups are somehow linked. Either you um, measured a bunch of objects twice, so you have one group of measurements and another group of measurements where there's kind of a pairing up, right? Where you have, for instance, you could look at the heights and weights of a bunch of people. And since each person is measured twice, you have one height and one weight that are tied to the same person. A another way of doing it is having uh, two different objects that are each being measured the same way, but those two objects are somehow related. Um, siblings, um, uh, spouses, in this case presidents and the people they ran against. And then in this case they're being measured, um, their heights are being measured. So you can see how there's a logical reason why you would match uh, you know, president to opponent, president to opponent, rather than just having an entire set of presidents and an entire set of their opponents. Um, when designing an experiment or planning on an observational uh, study, using dependent samples with paired data is usually better, it gives you a stronger result than using two independent samples. And what normally happens uh, with experiments is you have like a pre and post test on uh, things, whether it's people or, uh, or some sort of object, you're normally measuring it twice over time, so to speak, and that becomes uh, dependent samples, and that's a very common use um, of testing. And, and there's, a, there's a strong advantage to using dependent samples, because when you're using matched pairs, um, we're really eliminating a lot of um, other variation. You're, you're controlling for a lot of other variables because each uh, measurement is paired up with another measurement and then you're really looking at all of those individual differences rather than the two groups as a whole. And when you look at two groups as a whole, um, variation just kind of gets ironed out. Whereas when you look at each individual one, you're really seeing the differences from one step to the next. And then you're also controlling for a lot of things because the same thing's being measured twice or those two things are strongly related. So it ends up being a much stronger experiment. So whenever you can, try to use dependent samples. It just uh, results in stronger uh, results. Our notations for dependent samples. Instead of talking about X bar, we're now going to talk about uh, D um, as being an individual difference between two values of a, of a match pair. And then mu sub d is going to be the mean of those differences. And then instead of x bar, we're going to have d bar, which is going to be the mean difference for our sample data, right? The mu sub d is going to be uh, the average difference for the 
the population of matched pairs, whereas d bar is going to be the actual observed difference from our sample. And then we'll have an s sub d for the standard deviation of these differences, and then n is still the number, but in this case, number of pairs of data. Requirements just like before, we always have them. In this case, the data have to be dependent, right, instead of independent. Still have to have that simple random sample, and we still have to have that we're um, sampling from a normal population or that our sample is uh, large, bigger than 30. Here is the T statistic, right, the test statistic that we're going to be using for um, this particular measurement. And you'll recall your T statistic from uh, a previous, you know, from our previous just uh, one, if we just had one sample and we were looking at the mean of uh, one sample, that uh, T statistic is very similar to this one in uh, its overall formula. Uh, the simple one, right, for just one sample was x bar minus mu all over uh, s over the square root of n. So you can see these two are almost identical. Instead of the sum of an entire sample x bar, I'm sorry, some, the, the mean of an entire sample of things, x bar, we're looking at the mean of the differences between those two groups, right? So it still ends up being a sample of things. You, you can think of it as a sample of, you now have one big group of all these different scores, and then you're taking the average of those different scores, and so that's why these two things are really the same thing. And then instead of comparing the average of one group to some population, we're comparing the average of the differences to what we think or hypothesize, right, what the average difference is going to be in the population of things. We still have a standard deviation, only this time it's on our different scores instead of our x's, and then square root of n, right, where n is the number of pairs of things rather than just the number of things. So you can see these two formulas are really identical in, in theory. And so what we're really doing with match data is we're just uh, back to computing a simple one sample t-test. It's just that one sample is now a bunch of different scores instead of just a bunch of data values. p-values um, are still going to come out of the technology because we're just going to be running those um, a normal one sample uh, t-test or t-interval depending on what we're doing. Um, and so we can get p-values out of that just like normal. Critical values we can get out of tables. Our degrees of freedom are still going to be n minus 1. So everything is really the same. Uh, our interval equation is, is really just identical to what it is when we have um, one set, right, one set of things instead of these uh, differences. It's, it's still uh, almost identical to calculate E before our E was T of alpha over 2 um, times s over the square root of n, and now we just have s sub d, right? So again, we're doing the same thing. We're still just computing a one sample uh, t test and a one sample t interval for confidence intervals. Let's get back to our example. We have the heights of presidents, the heights of uh, their opponents, the people they, they ran against. So you can think of them as winners and losers, right? Um, and then all we have to do is calculate the differences. You'll notice some of them are negative and some of them are positive. You just have to, it doesn't matter, like you could, you could do all this in the opposite direction and then all of the positives would be negatives and the negatives would be positive. You're going to get the same results um, as far as rejecting or failing to reject. You just have to be consistent, right? In this instant, they did president minus opponent. So 189 minus 170 got you a difference of 19, meaning the president was 19 inches taller in that case. And then in the next instant, the president was actually 12 inches, sorry, these are in centimeters, 19 centimeters taller. And the next one was 12 centimeters shorter, 8 centimeters taller. They were the same, and then 1 centimeter taller. And so we're going to use that data and a significance level of 0.05 to test the claim, right? We always want to identify our claim that for the population of heights of all presidents, and their main opponents, the differences have a mean greater than zero. And what does that mean? Well, the way that we're measuring it, that means that the presidents tend to be taller than their opponents. So you always want to figure out what that means because that's going to help you out later when you have to um, you know, reword these in plain English. A requirement check? Well, we've got, uh, you know, we need to check that the samples are dependent. Well, of course they are because they're matched up. Um, randomly selected? Yeah, they told us they were randomly selected. 
The number of data points is five, so uh, normality should be checked. And from our um, normal quantile plot here thing, we can see that it's there's no obvious pattern, so we can assume that the condition is met. Step one, identify the claim and write our hypotheses. Well, the claim was that the differences were greater than zero. And so the opposite of that is that they're less than or equal to zero. We set our null to be the equal part, our, our alternative to be the greater than. Once again, this ends up being our claim. That's not you know the rule. It just happens to be that most of the examples we're looking at are set up this way. Step two, our significance level was given. 0.05. Step 3, we want to determine our sampling distribution, and since we're doing match data, right, paired data, we know that we have to use a student t distribution. Then we can look at our summary stats. We can take those five differences, these ones at the bottom here. So we're basically now just working with these five numbers. If we take those five differences, we can calculate the average and standard deviation of those five numbers and get that, and then it's just a matter of plugging those into our formula and getting our t value, right, our test statistic of 0.628. We can look that up in a table or use technology to get a p value of 0.282, which is pretty large, right? And whether we want to use the critical value method or the p value method, the critical value method using our degrees of freedom, we get a critical value of 2.132 and our test statistic was down here at 0.628. So in both cases we can see that we fail to reject. So step four, our, our um, decision is to fail to reject. Step five is we relate it back to the claim and our conclusion is there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the heights of precedence are bigger right, than their opponent. If we wanted to calculate our uh, confidence interval, in this case a 90% confidence interval, we can plug everything into the formulas and get this negative 7.7 .7 to positive 14.1 and because this interval does in fact contain zero, we can be 90% confident that the true population differences would contain zero and therefore that's another indication that there is no statistical difference between the two which is what they're talking about here. Now if we want to do this in technology, um, it's very simple. Let's go back to where our data is, so we can, or our results probably be easier, and uh, plug it straight into our calculator. Remember we're doing just a simple t-test now. So we're back to stat, test, and this is just a one sample t-test, so it's a simple t-test. If we do it with uh, statistics, Right? Then we have to, um, if we did data, we would have to enter in those five uh, difference scores. Okay, what are we testing against? Right, the, the, the mu sub zero, that's, um, we're testing against it being equal to zero, so we can leave that. Um, X bar, I know it says X bar, but that's just the average of our sample, so in that case, that's our D bar, right? That's the average of our differences. And then 11.4. Uh, is our sample uh, standard deviation. Our sample size was five and we were looking for um, our difference was supposed to be greater than zero, right? So we're, we're testing um, over here, greater than zero. Calculate. And there are the same results we got before. The, uh, the T of 0.627 and the P value of 0.2821. Very simple. Stat crunch, just as easy. Stat T statistics. We're now back to one sample, but it actually has the option for paired, paired data. And in this case, you have to have your data um, in columns, right? So you'd have to have the raw data of president's height in one column and uh, vice president's height in another column. Since we don't have that, we can't do the paired version. We have to actually just rely on T statistics for one sample with summary and here's where we would type in our mean, our standard deviation, our sample size, right? We're testing that it's equal to zero, our alternative is that it's, uh, sorry, greater than, and then compute it and we get the exact same uh, answers. And of course, if we're doing confidence intervals, it's just here. And if we're doing confidence intervals um, for the calculator, it's just uh, 
back to the same menu of stat tests and we're doing a T interval and there you go plug all that stuff in and calculate it in fact we can do this one really quickly because we just want a uh, 0 0.90 and there we go negative 7.699 right they put negative 77 up to 14.069 and they did 14.1 same exact stuff okay simple easy that's how we deal with uh, paired data when we're trying to do hypothesis testing and confidence intervals for means when we have dependent data.